Indeed, it is another blessed day to be in the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Why don't you stand with us for our call to worship? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind. Love your neighbor as yourself. Remain standing for our song. When all God's children get together, what a time. Amen, somebody. This is just an old Baptist hymn that you know. What a time. What a time. When all God's children get together. Let's pray together our prayer. God of power and might, turn our hearts of stone into hearts of flesh. For only in loving can we lead lives worthy of your calling. Grant us the courage to live with the saints in the glory of your love. And fill us with your grace and peace that we may know the richness of eternal life in your spirit through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated.
amen and amen again. Due to technical difficulties, we may not have announcements right this moment, but we have one of our own, Mr. David F. Lindsay, who's running for Hines County Circuit Judge, District 7. We're going to ask him to come up and speak to us this morning. Good morning. My name is David Lindsay, and I am running for Hines County Circuit Court Judge, Subdistrict 1. Um, first of all, I am a member here at Anderson, uh, especially pre-pandemic. Uh, usually we sit in at the 8 o'clock service right over there in that corner. Um, of course, while the pandemic was going on sometime last year, I couldn't sleep at night. And the reason I couldn't sleep at night was purely because I saw the direction that Hines County was going in. Um, it was disturbing to me. I prayed about it, and after I prayed about it, the right thing to do was to throw my hat in the office and run for office. That was the right thing to do. Uh, let me tell you something about myself. Uh, I am a true Jacksonian. I um, grew up in Presidential Hills, graduated from Callaway High School, go Chargers. Uh, graduated from the I love, Jackson State University, go Tigers. Uh, went on to graduate from the University of Mississippi School of Law and School of Engineering. I've been um, a trial attorney for about 25 years or so. Um, I've been in private practice, I've been a public defender, and I've been a prosecutor for the last 12 years. I've worked under Attorney General Jim Hood, I've worked under uh, District Attorney Robert Schuler Smith, and I'm currently uh, prosecutor in the DA's office for uh, Jody Owens. So notice I've been on both sides of the aisle. I understand what it takes to put cases together uh, because I've practiced all over the state in so many different areas. I understand how courtrooms are supposed to be run. I know what works and what doesn't work. That being said, um, I also, and most importantly, have a history of uh, holding people accountable for the crimes in which they commit because we know as we know violent crime is one of the biggest issues here in Hines County and I have been on that fight for over the last decade. I have three kids who drive around in Hines County and I want them to feel safe and I think that you and your kids should feel safe also. That's why I'm running. Something must be done. We must um, go in a different direction because what we're doing now just isn't working. That being said, please vote for me, David Lindsay, your Hines County Circuit Judge for Subdistrict 1. Um, and my social media is elect David F. Lindsay, and that's Lindsay, L-I-N-Z-E-Y. Thank you. Good morning, Andersonians. This is your Anderson Weekly. This week at Anderson, the Golden Agers will meet on Tuesday, July 12th from 11 a.m. until 1 p.m. in the Lord Fellowship Hall. And then that night, line dance class at 6 p.m. with Aaron Honeysuckle. Also on Tuesday nights at 6 p.m. in the Sanctuary Choir Rehearsal. No Wednesday night Bible study with Pastor Linda Williams in the Lord Fellowship Hall. Coming up in August, Children's Church will resume on August 7th at 10.15 a.m for ages 5 to 8 in room 110. Then on Thursday, August 11th at 6 p.m., Anderson's bowling team will resume bowling. Coming up on Sunday, August 21st, School Spirit Sunday and Blessing of the Backpack. The fourth Sunday in August, the United Methodist Women will have their annual program. More info to come. Watch our online worship service. It will air at 1 p.m. on YouTube. You can always stay connected with us by following us on YouTube and Facebook at Anderson United Methodist Church or text the word Anderson to 95577 to get important church news and alerts sent straight to your phone. This has been your Anderson Weekly. Have a great week. We want to keep all those announcements in mind, and at this time, we'd like to recognize special individuals who may be with us this morning, and that would be guests 
So if you are a guest in Anderson, not yet a member of the fold, would you please stand so that we may recognize you? No visitors? Okay, that's okay. I want you to stand up on your feet this morning. Look around to your left and your right and just give a wave to the person around you, behind you. Say good morning to them this morning. And what do we tell everyone that comes to Anderson? Be at home. Thank you. Good morning, Anderson. Good morning, good morning. Isn't God good this morning? Amen, every single day. It's time for us to worship God through our giving. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, amen. Pray with me our offertory prayer this morning. Use these gifts, O oh God, to plant seeds and hope in this community and from here to all your beloved creation. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, 
with your love, Lord. I'll never get enough of your love. Said I'll never get enough, never get enough, never. Because you're just that good. Our scripture lesson for this morning is coming from 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 11 through 17. Again, that's 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 11 through 17. And if you're there with me, it does read, And we do this so that we may not be outwitted by Satan, for we are not ignorant of his designs. When I came to Troas to proclaim the good news of Christ, a door was opened for me in the Lord, but my mind could not rest because I did not find my brother Titus there. So I said farewell to them and went on to Macedonia. But thanks be to God, who is in Christ, always leads us in triumphant procession, and through us spreads in every place the fragrance that comes from knowing him. For we are the aroma of Christ to God among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. To the one, a fragrance from death to death. To the other, a fragrance from life to life. Who is sufficient for these things? For we are not peddlers of God's word like so many, but in Christ we speak as persons of sincerity, as persons sent from God and standing in his presence. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
merciful and everlasting God. We come in a moment saying thank you. We know no other way to repay you. We, we, we know no other way to return but to say thank you. Out of all that is happening, that is happening, and that will happen, oh God, we, we still say thank you. Sickness on of every kind, but we still say thank you. Worries and anxiety of every measure. But, oh God, we say thank you. In the wake of what's happening in our world, we find a way to say thank you. If it's nothing but thanking you for bringing us to this moment, oh God, we thank you in the name of Jesus. You didn't have to do it, God, but you did. You didn't have to wake us and start us on our way, oh God, but you did. And for that, oh God, we say thank you, sir. Be with us, oh God. Be with everyone who's seeking your face. Reveal yourself, oh God, in a mighty way. And this time, reveal yourself like you've never revealed before. Continue, O oh God, to draw those persons who are seeking your presence. Bind us together with their finger of love that one of us can't fall for the other. We'll be ever more careful to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I, 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 I can, all, I can, all I can say don't have an answer for, for, for any question. Don't, have a, don't even have a question to raise at this moment. But <clears throat> those of us who know children, have children, or are children, be mindful, be vigilant, be aware of your surroundings, and always know, always know, that, 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 that we have an opportunity to, to, to change a child's life. You have the opportunity to change a child's life. And you want to know, how do I have that opportunity? Anytime you are in the presence of someone's child, you have an opportunity to change that child's life. And it may start with your child. Changing some other child's life may start with your child. Because when we see children killing children, it's because the child has gotten to the point where they can't take any more that somebody else's child has been putting on them. So the child's life you save may be your child's life or you may save a life through your child. All I say is be aware, talk to them, and, and I have to talk to mine. I, you know, I have to talk to mine, and I have to press mine and say, hey, I, I, I heard this, or I'm thinking about this, or, or what do you think about this? Uh, because they are thinking, whether you, whether you know it or not, whether their grades look like it or not, they are thinking, and, and, and it is up to us. Because we're, they are going to get to a point to where you are. They're going to get into old age, young age, middle age. They, they're going to get into their career. They're going to get into what we hope is a Christian life. And it's what, they, what they begin to live out is going to be some of what we instill in them. So from the scripture that we read to us this morning, I'd like to just talk to you about a life that is unlike my own. A life that is unlike my own. 
And anything, anything that you see, anything that you see or anything that you try to put out, anything that's already invented is merely a copy of the original design that is still in the person's mind. You and I are a copy of the original design that is still God. We, we, We are mere images. We are mere images of, of, of God. We are reflections, ought to be reflections of God. This, 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 this book board, this podium is a reflection, is a mere image, is a mere copy of the original design. Those pews that you are sitting in, that is not the original design. That is a copy of the image that was in the person's mind. And they say, well, we, we can make it like this. And you know, when one person makes something, you and I say it ought to be done like this, or it ought to look like this, or it should be shaped like that. But the original copy is still in, in the mind of the creator. With that being said, also, you and I, the life that we live now, the life that we live or the one that we are living or going to live or would like to have lived because I know what I am doing now is not what I said I wanted to do 20 years ago. When, 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 when I was sitting in the desk and, and, and the counselor come through the room and, and what do you all want to be when you grow up? At first I was wanted to be, I think I wanted to be a police officer until... And then after a while, when I began to understand what my life needed to look like or what I needed to be doing, I really wanted to be an aeronautical engineer. I was supposed to have been going to Spartan School of Aeronautics to work on airplanes and all of that other kind of stuff. I really wanted to be an engineer. God said, I had several things that I wanted to do, several places that I wanted to go, but then God said, if you just happen to look back over your life for just a little while, if you just happen to look at something you thought you were going to do, but then God said, somewhere you were going to go, but then God said. And, and, and if you look at it close enough, God said that before you said, Lord, here I am. Pastor May mentioned to us last Sunday about grace. That's what that was, when God has always had God's hand in your life. Before you said, here I am, God was already saying, I know the plan I have for you. Have you ever, have you ever, and I know, I know you have, but I, I'm going to ask you anyway, have you ever been in a situation in your lifetime where at the end or when it was over, you and all the people that were involved looked around and said, I couldn't have planned that better myself. I, I, I don't care how I would have drawn it up. I would not have planned it that way. Everybody involved would left in amazement. I mean, all of you found yourself saying, it could not have happened a better way. Or something like, I could not have planned it that way for it to work out like that, even if I tried. Here's another scenario for you that maybe you're able to resonate with. Someone may see something or come across something that reminds them of you reminds them of you or reminds them of something you have. And, and when they see you, they tell you all about it. And once they tell you all about it, they tell you that you need to see it for yourself. Eventually, time comes, the day comes, the moment comes, and, and you and that person are in that same area together, and they see this thing again, and they tell you about it. They say, there it is. You may do, say, two, one or two things. You may say, no, that's, 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 that's not like mine. That's not like me. Or you, you, you may say, well, yeah, it resembles a little bit, but it's just not like mine. Imagine somebody being somewhere and something happened that reminds them of you. 
You may say it again. I, 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 I don't think that's like me. But look, whether it is a possession or an action, that, that next experience or encounter that they have reminded them of you. Now, if you don't have anything, then they don't, they're not going to be reminded of anything. But, beloved, I go ahead. Now, I'm going to go ahead and give you the punchline to the message. It is because of what you possess. It is because of what you possess that reminds a person when they get somewhere else that you have something that they do not have. The scripture just said to us that, that even Satan is prepared for you. But if you read it close enough, it also says not only is Satan prepared for you, but nothing Satan does can stop what God is doing. Nothing that Satan has, no trap that Satan already has waiting on you can prevail when God is involved. It is because of your resilience. When they, when they go somewhere and they say that there is something that reminded them of you, when you go, they go somewhere and they, they may see something that you talked about. And I was, I, 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 I was, in, I was in, 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 in Houston just, just a few, few days ago. And, and, and while I was out there, the number of people that have gone out there, I never thought I'd go by and see this place. But I just so happened to be passing by M.D. Anderson's Cancer Institute. And, 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 and all of the persons that had gone through that place before, all of them started going through my mind. And what a sad, sorrowful moment, of, uh, a painful moment that was for me. But it was something about that place that reminded me of all the other persons that said they had been going through that. It was something about their joy that reminded me of that place. It was something about their resilience. It was something not only about their resilience, but it was something about their faith that reminded me. There are a few persons who go there, go there now regularly, and, and I just happened to text her and say, look, I, I, I passed by this place, and, and I thought about you. I thought about why you're traveling, how, how hard your travel must be. I thought about why you're resting, how, how uncomfortable your rest must be. You and I, who, who, who we are now, is not who we're going to be. But there is something about you that the person on the outside of these walls are going somewhere and say that is something happening in the world around them that is reminding them of you. You Christian individuals, those of us who say we are on the battlefield, those of us who say we are children of God, is there something about you that's going to remind the dying world that God still lives. As I was in conversation with God about the arrangement of, of, of this message, and, 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 I, and I wrestled several times with, with different things, and, 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 and this particular one, after throwing a several pages out of the window, and God was saying, no, that's for you, that's for you, that's for you. And, and I thank God for what God gave to me in that moment, but then I was like, Lord, but what about this? It sounds like you and I are just going back and forth into a conversation. We're, we're, just, we're, we're just tossing things around. And God said, yes, that's what I need you to remind the people to do. Don't think you're comfortable where you are. You and God need to go back and forth about this relationship that you have. You and I need to go back and forth about it because, one, we may not really have the type of relationship that God would like for us to have. I, 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 wanted, I definitely wanted to throw that one out of the window, but I think when I tossed it, the wind blew it, blew it back in. We are who we are. We're doing what we're doing. We're going where we want to go, but do you have, not the relationship you want to have, but the relationship that God wants to have with you. And when it comes to relationships now, look, you, 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 look take, take, take this for instance. You're, you're, you're whoever. 
Is your relationship with your whoever like your relationship with God? I had a person that tell me the other day, you hard to communicate with. Hmm. So, so, so if my relationship with that person is me being hard to communicate with, how is my relationship with God? I was in a situation the other day, and I, and I, and I, and I, and I, I, was, I was like, Lord, I know that we call you, we come running to you in the time of pressure and pain. Knowing the kind of situation I was in, I still said, Lord, I hope this. It's not one of those times. It's our relationship with whoever. Like our relationship with God. While I was pounding my head, while I was trying to figure it out, God is saying, look, things need to be put forth in comparison. If I am to be who I am in your life, then how is our relationship? How, 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 how is it? How is it? When you wake up in the morning, I, I, I make it a point. My, I, I wake up in the morning and I, I stand in the hall and wake everybody else up. And I, I stand in the hall because I, I want them to see me when they wake up. But I'm just, I'm throwing out some comparisons here, and I just want you to check it out. You know, see, see if your relationship is like this. When, when, when you wake up in the morning, do you just wake up? And go about your day? Or do you wake up and say good morning? Do you wake up and say I love you? Do you wake up? And, 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 and I'm, I'm really talking about our relationship with God. When you wake up in the morning, good morning. How about telling God, good morning, gorgeous? How about telling God, I love you? Because God has been standing with swift flying angels, with the warriors before you, with a host of angels watching over you all night long. Watching over us all night long and we wake up and pass by God as if he's not even, not even there. And I'm not talking about you. I'm just talking about who I'm talking about. But God said, he said, that's exactly what you and I need to do. We need to go back and forth in our life, in our own inventory, not worried about somebody else's life now, because if we're worried about somebody else's life, we'll get our life wrong every time. Your life, your relationship. Because I came into this world with a twin, but I came in before her. I don't know what order I'll leave, but I know I'm going to have to leave. And the Bible lets us know all of us that are born are surely going to die. But what about the relationship in between time? I've, 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 I noticed, I noticed that the last several messages have been about relationship because the Lord has been saying that there is some distorted relationships between he and us, between God and us. And we are walking around as if our relationship is all right. We can't go around trying to help somebody else get something that we don't have. I'm on a quest to help us see, realize, and renew a relationship with God like Jesus Christ. I said before, we we, we okay with the relationship with God um, in Jesus. Because that don't don't mean we, we, we don't really have to do much except the Lord 90 years ago, and that's as far as you and I have gone. But if we want to have a relationship with God like Jesus Christ, it is going to cause us to move out of our comfort zone. Our last message with you was also from 2 Corinthians, and we talked about a spiritual reproduction of an ideal life where we attempted to point out that flesh can only reproduce flesh. 
the spirit reproduces spirit. And how then can we say that we are living like Christ if we have not been transformed by the spirit that is Christ? We also pointed out that an ideal life is one like Christ that has been yielded to God, empowered by the spirit of God, and is one of unwavering faith. And this second part of that message, this, this squeakle, is, is us discovering that that kind of life is unlike our own. Living a life like that, living an unwavering faith kind of life, is a life that you really didn't plan a life like that. When I was five and when I was seven, I, 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 didn't, I didn't, I'm talking about myself right in this moment. I didn't plan. As much as people like to say, oh, you, you were one of those Henrys. Man, you know how many of them ain't in heaven? I don't either, but I don't want to be one of those ones. And, 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 and there I had to understand that God reproduces the spirit. Not your mother, not your father, not your sister, not your brother, not your lineage, but God reproduces the spirit that is inside of us. We pointed out also of this unwavering faith. That unwavering faith is, 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 is a faith that has been tried by every circumstance in your life. And yet you still hold on. And I'm not talking about like how we are now, because even now, you and I are trying to be the perfect example of ourselves. Right now, we are trying to be the perfect self. But imagine your life before you became a professing Christian. Well, what is that, Pastor? <laughs> the professing Christian is, is, is that person that said publicly that, that I'm a child of God. Before you start going around telling people that you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, how was that life then? How was that life if you can remember living without God? How was that life if you can remember living without a relationship with God like Jesus Christ? How was that life then? Is it anything like the life you live now? Is it anything like the one you profess to live now? Even where you were headed, is it any place like the Christian you is going now? Here in 2 Corinthians, again, we experience Paul talking or writing to the church of Corinth about their relationship. This letter portrays Paul's relationship with them in good times and bad. And Paul desires to rekindle the relationship with the Corinthians. While, while desiring to do that, it gives him an opportunity to reflect on his own life. That's what thinking about a relationship and perfecting your relationship does. It causes you to do some inventory over your life. Am I, am I, am I, am, am I, am who I am supposed to be? Am I walking the way I'm supposed to be walking? Am I talking the way I'm supposed to be talking? Because if you are in a relationship with God, God wants to know those things. God wants to know who's doing the walking. God wants to know who's walking with who? Who's talking with who? Who's holding whose hand? God wants to know if we are in a relationship, how and who is in control? This life is unlike my own. You know why it's unlike my own? Because this life is not. My own. The choir just sent, sent us through a musical rendition of what this life is. This life is not our own. This life we have surrendered. We should have. We might have. Somebody here has surrendered their life to God through Jesus Christ. Your life in your hands was a missile with no direction. Waiting to explode. 
but your life in God's hands is, 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 is a bus on a highway to heaven. And the reason I said a bus is because you're supposed to be influencing others to get on and go along with you. That is what we do. That is who we are. When, when we are out discipling, when we say we are disciple making, we aren't making more Henrys or more Andersons or, or more Mays. We are making more children of God. His commitment for the gathering of the saints generate, generates powerful reflections on God's grace and God's generosity. Pastor May brought to us a message last Sunday and said that grace is for us all, just in case you were not here. He said grace is for us all. You and I don't have to accept God's grace. God is going to sprinkle God's grace anyhow. How you figure you are where you are? I mean, even on today, being here this morning, God's grace has been sprinkled in your life. And not only did he send grace he added a little more mercy and said somebody somewhere you and I we don't have to accept God's grace God just gives God's grace and coming into a relationship with God we have to acknowledge that grace we have to acknowledge that grace and live a thankful life now you, you just can't be in a relationship with God and not be saying thank you for what God is doing I mean, again, let, 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 just compare it to your, your earthly relationships. How many people are going to do something for you and you never say thank you? How long are they going to continue? See, we, 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 we good to say, I, I, you know, we, we got friends as long as they need me, but when I need them. So compare that to your relationship with God. God got you as long as you need God, but when God needs you, We don't have to be, we don't have to ask for that. We, we, but we do have to be reminded of that because too many of us, listen to this, too many of us, I didn't say too many of you, I said too many of us are pedestal riding church folk. Too many of them, I'm going to say it again, too many of us are pedestal riding church folk. What you, what, you, what you mean? Yeah, Pastor, Pastor Scott, I'm glad you asked. I, 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 didn't, I didn't say Christian because I didn't, I didn't, I didn't want to get you confused too much, but too many of us are pedestal riding church folk. As long as I'm on my pedestal, I'll come to church. I'll sit amongst you, I'll dress like you, I'll smell like you, I'll do all I can to be like you as long as I'm on my pedestal. But just as soon as my pedestal begins to crumble. That's why I say pedestal riding church folk because church pedestal ride, because Christian, we don't, we don't ride pedestals because we are built for such a time as this. I'm, 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 I'll, I'll come to the church and I'll, I'll sit on every pew the church got as long as I'm the, the CEO, the EEO, the FEO, the any kind of O of the organization. I'll come and I'll sit next to the best dressed person, but just as soon as. I don't know who I'm talking about, but if you know who I'm talking about, go tell them I talked about them. As long as we are where we want to be. We'll be anywhere we want to be. But just as soon as something happens and it changes. But see, Christian folk, Christian men and women, they, 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 they understand that, that you, you should not boast. They understand how to be thankful. They, un to under they understand how to lift up the name of Jesus. They understand how even when I'm down, I'm up. Even when I'm weak, I'm made strong. They understand that when time get hard, let's point out a few things for, 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 for we get too, too far gone. Let's point out a few things about this life that is not our own. In order for it to be like that, it is a life in Christ. God is ultimately 
in control with what has been begun in Christ, God will faithfully perform. God causes us to be victorious, and there is no possibility of that happening outside of Christ. The scripture just told us that there are, there are two. One that it sounds right and good to, and one that it sounds bad and strange. Not only are there two individuals like that, there are two places that that are waiting for those kind of people to be occupying. To be in Christ is to be one with him, not apart from him. To be in Christ is to be one with Christ, meaning that I must yield myself like Christ did to God's will. I, I, I don't know what that will is. Of course you don't. God knows what that will is. You, you, you don't know where I'm going. I just said, come on and go along with me. Why would I say, come on and go along with me, yet you get in yours and ask me to send you the direction? God said, I know the plan. God said, I know the direction. God said, I know where we are going and entirely yielded to his will so that his will can be done in and through us. If you are in Christ, then there ought to be some kind of signs about your life. And when somebody say that, when the preachers say that, if you're in Christ, that ought to be a sign. And folks go to this and this and doing all that. No, there ought to be some joy in your life. There ought to be some love in your life. There ought to be some kindness in your life. There ought to be some forgiveness in your life. There ought to be some kind of reflection of God in your life. Second thing, this thing ought to reveal something about the wisdom of God. This life that is not like yours ought to reveal something about the wisdom of God. It ought to be, it ought to be something in you that, 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 that in your life reminds a person about the other life. It ought to be something about yours that reminds people that God still lives. It ought to be something about your life. You, 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 you know, like, like, like I just mentioned, being, being in Houston, it was something about that place. And it was something about somebody else's life that reminded me of the strength they needed to go in and the strength they need to come out. When a person you know comes to you, <clears throat> Distraught, broke, busted, and disgusted, you ought to you ought to reveal something. That way when they leave your presence and get somewhere else, they can say, That reminded me. God, God, God needs you and I. God don't just need the preacher. God needs everybody that said they are children of God. That's why we need to check our relationship to see if we are really children of God, to see if we are really Christian, and are we just churchgoers? Because there has to be a point in in, in your church-going life, there has to be a point where you surrender to the will of God. There has to be a point somewhere where you stop and say, Lord, I can't hold out no longer. There has, to be, there has to be a point in your life where, 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 where you don't get tired of the choir, but when they are not singing, there is something that's still boiling on the inside. We can't claim now. That, 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 that's the simple thing of making disciples. We can't claim to be making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world and are not led by the Spirit that is God. If, if, if that's the case, then you're just out trying to add to your family reunion. But when you're being led by the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God makes manifest itself and reveals itself in somebody else and continues to reproduce the Spirit of God. Even in the destruction that we find ourselves in and around the Christian, you and I, the Christian, 
supposed to be revealing the unseen God to a blind and destroyed world. Not anybody else. You hold, you possess <clears throat> what this dying world needs. And if you don't have it, we offer Jesus Christ to you this morning. As the doors of the church are open, we offer you a chance to take a closer look at that relationship. To see if it's not like anybody else's. You definitely don't want it to be like anybody else's. But you want it to be as if God would have it to be. The doors of the church are open. Is that one we ask you to come? Give us your hand and give God your heart. Let us stand. God, our relationship is on display. And we ask your God, if it be thy will, strengthen us in a right relationship with you. Strengthen us, O oh God, that as we move and as we walk and as we talk and as we go where we go, allow Allow your love to shine through that another one may feel love. Allow your mercy to shine through that another one may come running saying I can't hold out no longer. But in the meantime, in this time, in this season, God, strengthen us. Strengthen us where we're weak. Heal us where we are bruised. Mend us where we are broken and bind us with that finger of love that one of us can't fall for the other. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.